we're looking at and it's actually quite a lot of areas where people aren't looking at in the epstein case because the epstein case is this incredible vast uh treasure trove of investigations you know um a lot of the work that's been done on the epstein case is just like removed the topsoil and you see the network underneath and what they're doing is all loads of different activities he's a high level fixer doing high level stuff and in meeting all of these different people i, I started to get dragged in to what I see as a massive operation and I started to see the operation from kind of within the operation I started to see how I, people were trying to manipulate me and people were trying to get me to say certain things um, and I, I, I I'm already I'd already had enough experience to be a bit wiser than that um, and that led me to question just one victim in particular, a woman called Maria Farmer, who claims to have been uh, molested by Epstein and Maxwell um, on uh, when she was about 23, 24. Um, Bit old for Epstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he said he said that you know if they were um, uh, eighteen, they were too old for him. So I mean, he he was a a sadistic preferential paedophile he's not interested in in um older women but uh, also you know i had met maria farmer um separately i thought she was a hero i i you know i thought she was one of the best things ever um i listened to all the stories and i believed everything she said and when cracks started to appear in this and and it really got confusing so i had to investigate and that led me to finding a few different things there was a few people already who had been um i would say uh victimized by Maria Farmer who had been targeted by Maria Farmer who had come to me already and said I've had this experience I've got all of these different stories I can tell you um, and and I, I basically we set up a kind of like a surviving Maria Farmer group um, because she was being very abusive to a wide range of people openly um, so it's hard for her to deny this, you know. She it, it, all the evidence is out there, uh, many tweets. And she she was uh, uh, claimed to be a victim of Epstein and was at the forefront of victims claiming against the Epstein and Maxwell. Her affidavit, the first affidavit she uh, entered um, about her experience with Epstein, the molestation, and working for Epstein on the door and letting in Alan Dershowitz to the New York um, buildings that Epstein had, that happened in 2019 so that was just before that was i think it was about april um and that was like a few months before epstein would be arrested in 2019 it was very late in the game but there's a whole backstory that's very complicated uh, i don't really want to go into <laughs> yeah, 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 but okay. what it did it led me to realize that in 2017 18 19 um maria farmer was listed as uh working for this anti-trust fraud company um with alongside a guy called john stanley pottinger um, and some other very high up legal people and it didn't make any sense it was before she's entered in her affidavit it, she's claiming she's working with the legal team Pottinger um, is the legal the, like representative along with Edwards for a load of the Epstein victims um, so she's working with him before and then I started to uh, see messages from before where she's basically having a relationship with Stanley Pottinger mm -hmm. um, and so I was like who's Stanley Pottinger who is Jay Stanley Pottinger? He makes no sense. And in investigating him, I discovered a completely like, like an alternative American history. It rewrote American history <laughs> in, in, in following the line of this person isn't telling the truth. I don't trust her. She's attacking me. What's going on? Investigate. And most people, what they do in the world, and this is where the, a lot of for people who are investigating, that you can get angry with the person, the initial person. Everybody would say automatically, I should investigate Maria Farmer then and write an article about her. And then you tip for that, going backwards and forwards with someone who's a constant, probably like partial construct in the way she's acting, in her, her, her behavior at least, um, the, the outward behavior. Um, but, but who's these other people behind her? Who's these people she connects? And Jay Stanley Pottinger is one of the most important people in American history. So he was the legal representative for a group of Epstein victims. He was leading that case. Yeah, yeah he, he approached Bradley Edwards, who's the main guy. Edwards Pottinger was um, the firm that represented people like Virginia Gouffre and others. Uh, uh, who's the one who accused Prince Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pottinger approached Edwards in 2014 and was like, hey, 
you, you, just after Virginia Gouffre had come back to um, America after being interviewed in 2013, late for 2013 by the FBI in Australia, she come back to America to fight for justice and she meets up with Bradley Edwards and the day she meets up with Bradley Edwards in the night time, he gets a phone call from Jay Stanley Partinger who's saying, hi, you might not know who I am, but I'm... Um, I'm Jay Stanley Pottinger, and I was this, that, the other, Department of Justice, I was all of these different things, and I can help you out uh, with this Epstein thing. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want you to take the lead. And soon they created Edwards Pottinger Law Firm, um, and Pottinger... Uh, so who is he? Who is he? Who is he? International Man of Mystery. Wonderfully interesting. I went all the way back to his father first, John Pottinger Sr. I think John Paul Pottinger, I think his name is. He uh, ran John Pottinger uh, Insurance Company in Dayton, Ohio, and was a city commissioner in Dayton, Ohio. He was actually, um, the interesting fact, fourth city commissioner in a row to die while in office in Dayton, Ohio. So city commissioners were, it was a dangerous job, obviously obviously to be in it must have been a dangerous job he was um bohemian grove he was 32nd or 33 degree mason because he was scottish rights he was really big on the scene he was involved in every club and he had uh, three sons and two of them Jay Stanley Pottinger and David Forbes Pottinger are extremely interesting people. Of course, uh, Jay Stanley Pottinger is a little bit younger than his older brother, David Forbes Pottinger. And uh, David Forbes Pottinger, I mean, when I was um, writing the I go back, I discovered about, oh, his dad's this interesting guy who's linked with all of these famous clubs and etc. cetera. Oh, what, let, let's go a little bit forward. Oh, his brother. What happens to his brother? Oh, 1962, his brother goes missing. And they find only a shoe and a T-shirt and a few beer cans outside his car. What's going on? Oh, my God. And then he gets found in a ditch with amnesia. And none of it made any sense. Right. He, he had uh, run off with the 17-year-old babysitter, Sherry Van Der Vyl, who had gone missing four days afterwards as well. He had taken her to a uh, traffic to across state lines, child trafficking, mm -hmm. as Stanley Potting, his brother, um, uh, took her on a ship if you know what I mean, a euphemism there, uh, around Hawaii. Um, and they spent, what, six weeks sailing about before they ran out of most of the money, sold the ship, and then they w went back. He pretended that he got beaten up and found in a ditch, and she came back a little bit later. Uh, he was arrested, of course, and then he was given, like, a slap on the wrist, seemed a little bit protected. Um, so it was a really interesting time. By this time, their father had already died. Their father died in 1958 when John Stanley Pottinger had gone to... Um, uh, got started going to Harvard University and Harvard University during this period is one of the most interesting places you can possibly be if you're a young man who's extremely talented they will find you the thing you're going to do in the future they will fit that in this is a time of Brzezinski this is a time of Henry Kissinger running Henry Kissinger's international seminar training up people like Klaus Schwab eventually uh, and all these uh, uh, young leaders were all being brought out groomed yeah groomed through Harvard programs and projects. 